seconds to play. With 41 seconds to go, MOC has a one-point lead at 79-78. We are back after this. We'll officially seal it if he makes this one. And he does. It would take three possessions now for MOC. And here's a steal, and Harlan wins the 3-8 championship. Cyclones, 86. MOC, Floyd Valley, 70. So yeah, second state's pretty impressive, but it's always hard to lose your last game. And so I think it's, when you look back, when you watch it, you can say it's not, you know, it's an impressive state, and I mean, it is impressive, but it hurts still deep. I mean, you still want to win it, and you still, you know, you look at some of the threes that went down for them and not for us, or some of the shots that went in and out, and you're just like, oh, what could have happened? And so, you know, it's, it's difficult to go through it, but yeah, I, think, I think over the years, hopefully the, the disappointment of not putting in the shot or, or doing something will finally fade away. But it's still, a, it's still a great accomplishment to be second in state. That, that shot Dale hit to bring us into overtime is something that I'll definitely never forget. That was, that was incredible and it was wild. It was exciting to go into overtime. I'll never forget that shot. Uh, in the state championship when we were down three, I think, and then um, we ran down and I set a pick for Dale and he went the other way and did that double pump and drained it. That's a play that always stick in my mind. The Harlan game was looking bad for us when they started uh when they pulled up by like seven late in the game and they started stalling a little bit. Um, I, I, we were getting a little nervous, but we kept our faith. And just watching that play when Dale double clutched and made that through, it was just like slow motion, like it lasted like 10 minutes and it fell and that was, that was awesome. It's really uh, gratifying to, to be in that championship game. You know, even if, I know we didn't win, but you know, it was, it was, it was just great to get down to state again and all of our hard work really paid off, I thought. And, it really showed, especially in our comeback that we made, uh, the heart that we had. After the Harlan loss, it was uh, really hard for, for me, and I'm sure it's hard for the guys. But we knew that that was going to be the end, and we weren't going to be together again. So we decided that uh, we're not going to let this one loss um, put a bad taste in Rothwitz, what we've come from, from fifth grade. So uh, we put it behind us. Sure, it still stings, but. Uh, we had a blast and uh, talked about all of the fun times we had and made it uh, a good ending to what we, we had started. So I think our team did a great job of keeping things in perspective. Um, we knew it was just a game and uh, the, the things we went through together just brought us closer together and we realized that you know there's a lot more to it than winning and losing and you know we'd go through a hard practice together and a hard game together and it just brought us closer and we learned to um, just cherish every moment and uh, just enjoy the journey. Life's a lot bigger than just a basketball game that we go through every Friday or so. I mean, you got to keep the big picture in mind and keep keep a good perspective when you're going through games and stuff. I mean, you still get you still get nervous and everything, but if you have that trust in everybody else and that confidence, that, I mean, your night your life's not going to be over if you miss a shot. I mean, it makes it a lot easier. I'm gonna miss being with my teammates because. It was awesome. All the guys on our team are awesome, and yeah, it's definitely gonna be the teammates. Losing is hard, but the relationships you build. I hope I never lose them, but still, you're gonna lose some of it when you're not playing with them. So, well, I'd say the the things that come to mind would be um, probably the seniors first, saying goodbye to those guys, um, known them since really since they were little kindergartners and especially fourth grade when they started the basketball and got to know them and their parents and their grandparents uh, really, really well and some of those memories. And then I would say along with that, um, probably the great job our juniors did of following the lead of our seniors. Uh, we just had a great time and we were able to enjoy the journey and just have fun the whole way. And we didn't matter like whether we played well we just always went hard and brought everything we had to the, game, to the game and brought glory to God. I know right away that uh, I'm kind of sad that it's over because I know I'm going to miss the guys that we had on the team this year. And, uh, but I'm glad for the experience that we had. And uh, it was a good time that, with all the seniors, but we're going to miss them. Probably most of the memories like helping all the people that have been in problems that 
like uh, Zach, and just the old lady that turned 100 that we gave a basketball to that's like watched and listened to most of our games. So just like all those memories of helping people out, it was just a great experience. And then probably on the court, it was just a great style that we all had. And everyone knew how to turn it on when we needed to, like Richie Clark, just turning it on just at the right times. And when we needed him, he'd step up and pretty much any senior and even some of the juniors that we had just to step it up when we needed to. Just how, I remember state tournament a lot and that was a ton of fun, but just how we had really good team chemistry and we always talked about playing for a higher cause and focusing on developing not only as basketball players, but as um, young men off the court as well. I mean, yeah, they're good athletes, but they're so much better people. I think that just stood out. I mean, I didn't maybe see the court as much, so I had a lot more time to look, watch people around me a lot, learn a lot of stuff about them. About two years ago, we came up with a little saying that uh, we were after more than a championship. And we hadn't been to the state tournament in 10 years and didn't know if we'd ever get back. You just don't know those kinds of things. But we had made a conscious effort as coaches and as a team that uh, it was going to be a lot more than just winning basketball games. It's going to be about the relationships and making a difference in the lives of the people that we encountered, each other as teammates and coaches, our fans that would watch, uh, opponents, officials, whomever it might be, we really wanted to perform, compete, and relate to others in such a way to communicate that Winning and playing to the best of your ability is important, but it's not the most important thing. And I, I would be lying to say that, uh, you know, losing the final game didn't hurt. I mean, it hurt because uh, we're competitors. But I think uh, to be able to see the big picture beyond the wins and the losses, beyond the final outcome of the score um, is key, and our guys were we're really, really great about that. Yeah, that's that's what I think was so cool about this group. They're so humble, you know. They were getting so much glory with the community, and and uh, the kids at the games just just are in awe of them and and idolize them so much. And yet they're so down to earth, and um, they really they really do go out of their way to uh, to make other people feel special, which is what what I think is so special about this group fifth grade playing basketball and um, in the middle school when uh, you had everyone out for basketball, guys like Ryan Emerson, Adam Pick, Andy Anderson, and uh, how it kind of dwindled down to uh, um, the team we have now and uh, just the group of guys we have and uh, the things we've done um, and what we've done and how we've come together and the relationship we had is just awesome. This group is just their 24-hour um, work ethic. Um, you know, they, uh, I don't, I think the seniors might average about a 3.5 or 6 and, um, you know, their off-season workout was second to none and, and uh, their practice time was amazing and then all the things they do for the community and, and for their church is just, uh, uh, was just incredible. Yeah, I think uh, the senior class that we had this year worked all year round as hard as they could and they brought us up and worked with us to make sure that next year we'll work as hard so we can get hopefully as far as they did and that yeah we just have to work hard in the off season so we'll be good during the season. You know we got, we got such an awesome bench and everything starters are awesome and you know each each game a different person has his, has his game and I think you know everybody steps up when someone's not going right or not shooting's right and I think they didn't even think about it till it happened but yeah stepped up and good things happen how much we like to run. I guess ever since like elementary, we've just pushed the ball up the floor and it's just been the style of play we like to do. When we were freshmen, we called the press chaos. Uh, that, that was just kind of, that kind of symbolizes how we play, you know. We're, uh, we're, we have a lot of guys that really like to get out and run, you know. And I don't think any of us would, you know, it'd just be boring if we just slowed the game down and rolled be half court. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, like when we go against other teams, no one else really plays like we do, you know, they might press, but it's not uh, not to the intensity or the up-tempo that we do it. So I really, I really think that it was our, to, our, to our advantage because uh, we had the deep bench and 
and no one else played it, so no one's else used to it. Well, first you got to know what your what the basics of the defense is, but you just run around. We have one one defense called Silver, and pretty much the two guards up top just run around like crazy and put ball pressure on, on the guy with the ball. It's just crazy. So. I think that it's that way because we uh, we like to press, you know, and the the more time the, the more the, the game goes on, we uh, we wear we wear them down. They get tired, so. The more time we have, the better for us because we know that we're in plenty of good shape to take them on for the rest of the game. So, Well, I think it's, a, it's different than a lot of teams have done. I mean, there's been very few teams I can think of. I know Northwestern has some teams that do that, but I don't think it's to the extent of where you can have eight, nine guys that go straight out and can play. And if you need a sub, sub in and still basically not lose anything out on the floor. So I think that's the difference between um, these last two years over the the last while and other teams is because other teams you have a couple great players and the rest of the team is good but not as your bench is a little weaker than the rest of them so when you for our team it was a little different because you sub out three of the starters and you don't really lose anything so it was a, that's the different aspect and so I don't know I don't know if we've changed the game of basketball but we've we've um, I think we've given the fans and the crowd something something to enjoy watching for the past two years at least. Over the years, we've really tried to be a team that plays with a great deal of passion, a great deal of joy, and really play um, high-intensity basketball, pressure offense, pressure defense. And I think this particular group of kids, it really fit them well. A lot of guard-orientated type players, uh, some late bloomers in the post position with Brent DeBoer and Michael Giscute. But these guys loved that style, and it did fit their personalities because they are aggressive, and yet they're pretty loose. They're able to make mistakes and not let that really affect them just to keep going. And with this particular style, you're going to make mistakes. Uh, you're going to have your peaks and your valleys, and just to keep your poise going through that. And, and this group of guys had a great deal of poise. Our object was to practice and play like champions each and every day. Um, but as you talked about, as the group came up, I'm sure my dad saw what needed to be done with us. And uh, he gave us a little more responsibility. We ran our motion offense, and it gave us more options, and it let us think about what we had to do on the court and the freedom we had, because we had a lot of smart guys on our team that they knew how to win, and they knew how to get guys to score. They knew how to get rebounds. They knew how to pass the ball. So just uh, the athletic smartness that we had. Um, I think allowed us to, to do this motion offense and to do the things we did on it. So, uh, I think we had a great group of seniors this year. I think it was a really rare thing that the seniors and the juniors really meshed a lot and that we all got along great. And I, yeah, I just think it was a rare thing that we had a team so great that could mesh so well. We were prepared for what we did because we practiced every day. Like We said we were going to practice like champions every day and be the most improved team that day in practice in the state. and so. I think we were really prepared for state, and once it came, we just did what we always did and didn't change anything. It was one of our goals was to practice and play like champions every day. And so, I mean, we talked about improving more than any other team in the state each and every day and absolutely getting after it. And along with that, we just, I think it was just kind of understood too that we knew we had to get after it every day. And we got after each other, and we could, you know, we got, we got into it a few times. We were, it got physical, but we could, uh, we could get really intense in practice and still walk off the court being um, at the end of practice being best buds and joking around yet when we were walking off. Um, practice is pretty much like a war where they would just give it all they had all the time. I'll never forget sometimes when uh, a couple of our guys are just, they're just absolutely foamy at the mouth because they're so mad and you know we're just diving after each other and tackling each other and it's, it, it got real crazy because uh, you know everyone wants to win and you know, even though it's not a game and there's nobody watching you know we still you just when we're playing five on five um, game to three or something you know you do not want to lose and so I think that's what really drove us to uh, and and what was good about it was uh, you know we might be able to be real cutthroat opponents during practice but after it's all done you know we'd hop in the showers and we'd be uh, best friends again. More intense in practices in the games I'd say we were we were able to uh, have fun with it somehow. 
beat each other up, but then shake each other. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how, how to explain it really. We just were, we were, in, we were able to enjoy the struggles that we went through in practice. That's just an amazing gift when you can um, absolutely just get after and practice and push one another to another level. And almost get to a point where, um, it, you know, it's getting tense. And then walk off the court and put your arm around each other and push each other in the weight room and, and uh, talk about some of the positive things that uh, you want to accomplish. It just says a lot about this group and they're able to do that. Uh, mental toughness, we practice that a lot in practice with uh, coach doesn't like to call fouls and we do a lot of that stuff, keeping us mentally tough. Sometimes it turns into a football practice, but it's fun. Well, the, the practices were really intense and everybody played a role. It wasn't like these guys will do this and everybody else kind of watch. It was everybody's involved in anything. and it was, it was very intense. I mean, we, we would hate each other on the field or the court. Then afterwards, we'd be joking around. I mean, I, I broke my nose the last, the last week of practice. It was so intense and it's, it was just nothing out of the ordinary, it didn't seem like. So it was very intense during practice. Basically, we try and practice like champions every day and we just kind of beat on each other all practice long for an hour and a half every day and really try and push ourselves and work on the press and it's very intense. I think this group brought the mentality and like we practice so hard that games are easy almost like games are not even you didn't get tired during games because our practices were so hard and the physicality of our practices really helped me out in games playing down in the post and coach Young always pushed us to do better during practice and that always helped us to do well in games. We also are all competitive, and we're competitive in the classroom, out of school, um, or even in sports. So I think it's the competitive nature in us. And then we've been friends for so long. I mean, it's it's hard to stay mad about something that's such so trivial as basketball or like an elbow or something like that. So it's it's pretty easy to go intense with somebody yelling at you, and then let it be off the court when it's off the court. Coach Young, if you know the guy, he's really intense, and in practice we would go like that. We would just from drill to drill, and um, my sophomore year, my sophomore year last year, um, at the beginning of the season, I wasn't really ready for it. But the seniors this year did a good job of preparing us for it. And after the first week, we knew what was expected of us. So, being someone who didn't uh, play a whole lot, you know, you get a lot of reward seeing those other guys succeed. You know, uh, I remember. Coach would talk about uh, really wanting that your fellow teammate to really uh, do well and really have a lot of success, even though you might be fighting for a spot with against him. Um, I think that was something that I uh, that I really got a lot of gratitude out of seeing those other guys that I would push in practice, um, just try to give them my all to make them the best that they could, so they could have a lot of success during the games. So uh, even if even if I didn't get out there and you know a lot of people weren't seeing me, that was all right because. Um, you know, I knew that I was doing my part and my role on the team, and so that was that was that was where I took the granted the appreciation from that. Uh, probably like Clay, just having fun, being the guy to hang around with, and Ted, a lot of fun memories with Ted. Richie laughing at Dale when Dale was getting yelled at, and yeah, just a lot of fun memories. I think a couple. One is uh, Debo's alley oop dunk. And then uh, Dale's three at the uh, championship game that sent in overtime. Probably Brent DeBoer's dunk, the alley oop dunk from the sideline. It was just amazing. Probably one of the funnest things to watch and cheer for. Probably just Adam. Just they call me the big ogre guy, but you know, <laughs> just getting big and stuff, and always a giant and stuff like that, kidding around like that. Debo is just unbelievable. He he goes down and works with our third graders in the elementary school and the kids just absolutely love him. He's a tremendous personality. Dale stole it in half court and he was laying on the ground and I thought he was going to get fouled but he didn't and I took off from three point line and he threw me the ball and I was at half court and I ran down and I don't really know what happened but all of a sudden I went up and dunked it and there was a central line guy like right underneath me and and the crowd went wild for like five minutes. It was crazy. Uh, Brent's dunk from Dale. I don't think it was maybe the Asheville game. And the one was, I don't remember what game it was, but like threw a whole court pass to Skipper, threw it behind his back, and then Starkey threw it over his head. Then they ended up missing the layup, but it was a pretty sweet progression. Well, actually, the best one didn't actually happen during the state tournament. It was at home. We had a game, and I cannot remember who it was, who we were playing, but. 
Dale lobbed up a pass to me at, on a fast break, which he does all the time, but he overthrew it a little bit. So I jumped up to grab it and threw it to Richie, and Richie caught it and threw it behind his head to Brent DeBoer. And Brent DeBoer tried to grab it and dunk it, but he just missed it. But even though he missed it, it was probably the greatest play that we, we were talking about it at halftime in the locker room. We were laughing about it. It was one of the greatest plays. As I was looking at these pictures after the season was over, and it's in the hallway before one of the basketball games, and of course I'm getting pumped and intense or whatever, <laughs> and I see in this picture Dale with the number 20 jersey on, and I'm thinking, God, Dale's number is 13. That's Nate Skipper's jersey. And I'm thinking, what on earth are these guys doing? I think just for fun before the game, they traded uniforms and were warming up and they're probably <laughs> probably seeing, checking to see if I ever even noticed, which I didn't uh, because I'm too focused on the game. I think the difference um, last year, we went down to state and it took us about six and a half hours, seven hours to get to Des Moines for a four hour trip. And then this year we added a coach, uh, Coach Tilsner, and he was hauling down there. He must've been going 75, 80 the entire way and uh, cut, cut down our time about three hours. So that was, that was a little nicer this year so that we didn't have to do that. I think one of the, the first, first varsity game that we had as, as a sophomore for me was in Hartley, Melvin Sanborn, yep. playing HMS. And then it was a pretty close game where we I think it was, we were down, down three or four, I don't even know, at the end of the game. And uh, coach, was, we had a timeout and coach was setting up a play and he asked, he asked one of the, older guys, the team captains, Jason Gonzaga, what play he wanted to do, or Cody, it was Jason or Cody Zutenhorst, I think, and then uh, who, who he should have take the last shot, and they mentioned my name as a sophomore. I was only a sophomore, they're seniors, and they, they had confidence in me to take that shot, and I think that's what helped build, uh, build up the trust that we have ex exhibited throughout the last three years as, as a team. Uh, I'll never forget the Spencer game. It was I don't play a lot, and I got about I got five minutes at the end of that game, and uh, that was a blast because me and a we had a friend John Young we said we're gonna get me the ball this game because it was probably realistically it was probably the last time I'd play because that was the uh, the district final and it was sub state next and it was a state tournament and the scrubs don't usually get a lot of playing time there so I and I, I ended up putting up seven or eight points in those four minutes and it was it was something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Halftime, usually we would be sitting there and. Um, we have our water boys coming first, but it's always, we always joke around at halftime and then just before Coach Young would walk in, we'd get serious and right as he'd open the door, everyone would be quiet and someone would say something like, let's rebound harder or something just to, to make sure to pretend that he knew we were focusing, even though we weren't. And there's a lot of times where he asked for a towel and we threw him like 50 towels during the time. It was always Clementine. We always had Clementines. Well, maybe sometimes the less you know, the better. Um, I do know, uh, I found out later after the year was done, these guys, had, um, I know that they kept things pretty loose. And I really tried to um, emphasize to the guys that it's to be fun. And uh, the only thing that really mattered is that when the opening tip off came, they had to be ready to unleash. And so, yeah, some of the things that go on in the locker room I'm probably not fully aware of, and um, but that's okay because I have a great deal of trust in these guys that they would know where the line is and they would understand uh, what it takes uh, to be competitive on the court and play to the best of their ability. I remember at the West Line game, that was when Coach Young was in Russia, so we had Coach Starkweather and we could not stop laughing. This janitor walked in the in our locker room while we were having our prep talk, and he was something else. And we couldn't stop laughing during the whole talk. And Coach Starkweather later said that he was afraid that we might lose that game because we were so unprepared. But really, we came out and played really well. And